Space is a vast and mysterious expanse that has fascinated us for centuries. From ancient civilizations to modern day astronomers, humanity has always been drawn to the cosmos. But with this fascination comes a whole lot of misconceptions. In this video, we'll embark on a cosmic adventure to debunk some of the most common space myths. Get ready to have your mind blown as we explore the universe's most intriguing secrets. Our planet is wrapped in a cosmic junkyard. We're talking about space debris, defunct satellites, spent rocket stages, and millions of pieces of fragmented material, all hurtling around Earth at incredible speeds. Imagine a marble representing a tiny piece of debris colliding with a satellite at thousands of miles per hour. The damage can be catastrophic. Even tiny paint flecks can cause significant damage when traveling at those velocities. The International Space Station has to constantly maneuver to avoid these high-speed projectiles. The problem of space debris is a growing concern as each collision creates more debris leading to a dangerous domino effect known as the Kessler Syndrome. It's a very real threat that we need to address if we want to continue exploring the cosmos. Let's talk about our very own star, the Sun. We see it every day, a bright yellow orb in the sky. But here's the thing, the Sun isn't actually yellow. The Earth's atmosphere is more efficient at scattering blue and violet light, which is why the sky appears blue. The Sun emits all colors of the rainbow, and when you combine all those colors, you get white. If we could observe the sun from space without the interference of our atmosphere, it would appear white, not yellow. Think of it like this. The sun is like a giant light bulb emitting all colors, but our atmosphere acts like a filter, removing some of the blue light and making the sun appear yellow to our eyes. Movies love a good space explosion, right? A giant fireball engulfing spaceships, a deafening roar echoing through the void. But here's the reality. True explosions like the ones we see on Earth can't happen in space. On Earth, explosions occur when a rapid release of energy creates a sudden expansion of gases. These gases then collide with the surrounding air, creating the shock wave and loud boom we associate with explosions. But in the vacuum of space, there's no air for those expanding gases to push against. So what would happen if you blew up a spaceship in space? You'd see a brief flash of light and the debris would expand outward silently. On a clear night, gaze up at the sky and try to count the stars. The naked eye can only see a tiny fraction of the stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. In fact, on an average night, you can only see about 2,500 stars from any one point on Earth. Our eyes perceive the faint glow of distant stars as a continuous milky band across the sky, making it difficult to differentiate individual stars. Add to that the limitations of our peripheral vision and the fact that many stars are too faint for our eyes to detect and you begin to understand why counting the stars is a fool's errand. The asteroid belt, a region between Mars and Jupiter, is often portrayed in science fiction as a treacherous minefield of densely packed asteroids, spaceships dodging and weaving to avoid collisions. But the reality is far less dramatic. While it's true that millions of asteroids reside in the asteroid belt, the distances between them are vast. The average distance between asteroids is estimated to be about 600,000 miles. So, while there's always a chance of encountering an asteroid in the asteroid belt, the odds of a collision are astronomically small. In countless movies, we see astronauts exposed to the vacuum of space without a suit their bodies exploding in a gruesome display. But what would really happen? The reality is far less dramatic, but no less deadly. First, you wouldn't explode. Your skin is strong enough to contain your internal organs, at least for a short time. You would, however, experience a rapid loss of pressure, causing the air in your lungs to expand and potentially rupture your eardrums. Without the protection of a spacesuit, you'd also be exposed to the sun's intense radiation, causing severe burns. We often think of space as being incredibly cold, and it's true that temperatures in the shadows can plummet to hundreds of degrees below zero. But here's the thing. Temperature in space is a tricky concept. In the vacuum of space, there's no air to transfer heat. So while an object in direct sunlight might be baking hot, an object in shadow just a few feet away could be freezing. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. In space, 
There are very few particles to begin with, so the concept of temperature as we know it doesn't really apply. Think of it like this. Imagine sticking your hand in a hot oven and your other hand in a freezer at the same time. Your hands would experience vastly different temperatures even though they're in the same room. The same principle applies to objects in space. We often picture Earth as a perfect sphere, but our planet is a bit more complex than that. Due to the centrifugal force created by its rotation, Earth actually bulges at the equator and flattens slightly at the poles. Think of a spinning top. As it spins, its middle section appears wider. Earth's rotation has a similar effect, although on a much smaller scale. This bulge at the equator means that the diameter of Earth is slightly larger at the equator than at the poles. So the next time you see a picture of a perfectly spherical Earth, remember that our planet is a dynamic, rotating object with a unique shape all its own. You've probably heard the phrase, in space no one can hear you scream. And it's true for the most part. Sound waves, unlike light waves, need a medium to travel through, like air or water. In the vacuum of space, there are far too few particles for sound waves to propagate. However, that doesn't mean there's no sound in space at all. Inside a spacecraft, for example, astronauts can hear each other because the air inside the cabin provides a medium for sound waves to travel. And while traditional sound waves can't travel through the vacuum of space, other types of waves, like electromagnetic waves, can. These waves can be converted into sound waves allowing us to hear things in space, like the radio emissions from distant stars and galaxies. Astronauts floating effortlessly in space may seem weightless, but the truth is gravity is still hard at work. The sensation of weightlessness, often called microgravity, is actually the feeling of constant freefall. Imagine yourself inside an elevator that's plummeting towards the Earth you'd feel weightless because you'd be falling at the same rate as the elevator. That's essentially what's happening to astronauts in orbit. They're constantly falling towards Earth, but their forward velocity is so great that they keep missing the planet, resulting in a continuous state of freefall. So, while astronauts may feel weightless, they're not actually free from gravity's pull. Gravity is what keeps them in orbit and prevents them from drifting off into the vastness of space. Movies often depict space travel as a simple matter of pointing your spaceship in the right direction and hitting the gas. But the reality is far more complex. Spacecraft don't travel in straight lines. They follow curved trajectories dictated by gravity and orbital mechanics. To reach another planet, a spacecraft must be launched at a precise speed and angle to escape Earth's gravity and then adjust its trajectory to intercept the target planet's orbit. It's a delicate dance of physics and engineering that requires careful planning and execution. Even traveling at incredible speeds, it would take months, if not years, to reach our closest planetary neighbors. In 1976, NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft captured an image of a region on Mars that seemed to resemble a human face. The face on Mars became a sensation, fueling conspiracy theories about ancient Martian civilizations. But as with many things in life, the explanation is far less extraordinary. Our brains are wired to find patterns even when none exist. This phenomenon is known as pareidolia, and it's the reason we see faces in clouds, animals in random shapes, and even a face on Mars. Subsequent higher resolution images of the region revealed it to be a natural geological formation, debunking the myth of the Martian face. Our solar system isn't stationary, it's hurtling through space along with the rest of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way, like most galaxies, is constantly rotating with stars and solar systems orbiting its center. Our solar system is located about two-thirds of the way out from the Milky Way center, and it takes us roughly 230 million years to complete one orbit around the galactic center. The last time our solar system was in this same spot in the galaxy, Dinosaurs roamed the Earth. You might think that Mercury, being the closest planet to the Sun, would be the hottest, but the title of hottest planet actually belongs to Venus, the second planet from the Sun. Venus has an incredibly dense atmosphere composed primarily of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. 
This thick atmosphere traps heat from the sun, creating a runaway greenhouse effect that sends temperatures soaring to an average of 867 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt lead. Mercury, on the other hand, has a very thin atmosphere, which means it can't retain heat as effectively. So, while Mercury experiences scorching temperatures during the day, its surface temperature plummets at night. So there you have it, folks. We've journeyed through the cosmos, debunking some of the most persistent space myths. Remember, the universe is full of wonder and mystery, and the more we learn, the more we realize how much there is still to discover. If you enjoyed this cosmic adventure, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your fellow space enthusiasts. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more mind-blowing explorations of the universe. Stay curious, keep questioning, and never stop exploring the cosmos.